Welcome to Theatre of the Mind Flayer, a D&D play podcast set in the homebrewed world of Jekyll. We've got two DMs for some reason, which can only mean twice the fun. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your time at Theatre of the Mind Flayer. Oh, welcome to Theatre of the Mind Flayer. We're finally live, live and in front of your faces. Uh, Michael's working the camera, as he usually does. I'm Jacob Mation. We don't have Caleb Dowdle. <laughs> we normally would. Uh, we're coming to you live for the first time. Not live. On camera for the first time. Uh, thanks to our many, many patrons. Uh, the Snack Daddies. Woo! Seth and Connor. Uh, Apra yes. Crez. Andrew. Uh, Predizino. Oh, okay, Alex. Uh, Vez. It's just Vez. They've been wonderful. Uh, and our new uh, patron, Caffeine. Otherwise known as uh, Thrasher Asher. Asher. Thrasher. My, my buddy Thank from Australia. Thank you so much for supporting us. That's the reason why we're able to be on camera. That's a nice long list, I'd say. It yeah. is a nice long list. It can be longer. Anyway, it, everything's better when it's longer, uh, <laughs> including lists. Uh, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. Uh, what is going on with you today? You are looking as soon at as the camera's on. Hogan is like, I'm you are here. in front of this thing. That is producer Hogan. He is our producer. Uh, how you doing, buddy? He's you mugging the camera. I'm yeah, he really is. Yeah. Lick that microphone. Break. Uh, he is giving lovey eyes to uh, Luke Sykes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Luke. This is Danielle Butlin. Hello, Danielle. We have Hercules Mays. Hello. And we have Michael Briganti. I'm Michael, yes. <laughs> You're That's all looking right. at the camera more than me. And it's <laughs> it's gonna... <laughs> I need more attention. Uh, this is a D&D uh, live play. Uh, we are unique in that we usually have two Dungeon Masters. Um, that well, is not the case ish. for now. Our... <laughs> Do we? <laughs> We started with two Dungeon Masters, then it kind of petered out, then he came back as a uh, sentient weapon, a score of sentient weapons. Uh, I think there's 12 of them. Uh, But we thought we'd come in today and say hi, introduce ourselves, a little session 2.0, and we thought we'd introduce our characters, give you the story so far, uh, muck around a little bit, and uh, that way those of you just joining us on video as we start at level 10 in the uh, animal city of Lorna Karth, uh, you'll know what's going on. So if you'd like to go around and tell us a bit about your characters. Just uh, physically what they are, what they're about. And then after we do a recap, we will talk about how they've changed. Uh, all right. Who wants to go first? Uh, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> well, You've I, been voluntold. The cameras go on and all of a sudden. <laughs> stress, stress, stress. stress. Uh, yes. Um, I'm Michael. No. Um, I play. No? I play. No. <laughs> no, I already did that. You're they already Michael? know. They already know. I can get straight to the character stuff. Um, um, Michael. I play Azareth Rosewall. He's a uh, half elf. You, you know, yeah, I just, early I on. his last name. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't come Never often. forgets his last name. We um, often forget his first name. Yep. <laughs> Luke doesn't know him. His first name. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a half Luke elf. Luke runs a game and he barely knows the character's name. <laughs> he's a half elven sorcerer. Um, he deals in uh, the shadowy type magic. Um, he's a. Uh, Fuck's sake, because he's he cha- he's changed a lot physically over the last little bit. We're not there yet. We'll get to that. Don't talk but about that us, yet. Tell us physically what he started as. What he started at? Well, he was um has kind of long like shoulder length dark hair, uh kind of scraggly and messy, uh with a little bit of a like a goatee going on, um scraggly beard and with kind of patchy. Uh he wears dark um dark very dark blue trimmed um sort of robes and sashes that have some furs on it um very stylish but also very functional uh, a little bit of worn and worn torn from all the adventuring and is his underwear fur lined or uh his underwear <laughs> very good question <laughs> everyone start thinking about your i would characters say the underwear. inside yeah the, in, it's, the inside is texture of tell the men they made it with a <laughs> And um, show them in the metal I got. <sighs> but yeah, he's got he's just got very functional clothing, has a uh, cape that kind of uh just cascades down one side, like one shoulder. Uh yeah, one of those. And uh he has some uh flamboyant esque earrings, uh with some feathers and some jewelry pierced through uh the bottoms of his ears, as most of his half elven ears are covered from his hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but he has or yeah. had whatever. We'll yeah. get to it. We'll get to that. We'll get <laughs> to that. Um, yeah. and yeah, he's just and he's a class wise. Uh, he's level ten. 
Level 10 sorcerer. Yeah, started off. Uh, we started yeah. off at level 3 and the, that we've progressed through almost 100 episodes and these guys are at level 10 now. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. What, what, what actor would play him? Yeah, good question. Mm, I fuck. I had, an ad, I had an answer for this too. Can't, we'll come back to you. Uh, Herc. Uh, I <laughs> one Edorath Wolf. Edorath Wolf. Uh, he's a shifter, paladin, blood hunter, rogue, multi class mess, beautiful mess, just like him. Uh, long back length, uh, black hair, scruffy, uh, full beard, a uh, bit of a broken nose. Um, Wearing a very traditional pirate garb, the 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 flowy white shirt, yeah, it's his it's his glorious thing, uh, the 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 white flowy poet shirt, the uh, tight leather pants, uh, knee high leather. Wait, he's boots. a poet? Huh? He's a poet? Poet shirt? I didn't even know it. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Hey. Boo! Boo! Tomato! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was, uh, yeah, uh, tight leather pants, uh, <laughs> with, uh, knee high leather boots with five inch heels, um, and a bleached bandana now, uh, adorned with a large scimitar and gun. Beautiful. Yeah. What actor would play him? A <sighs> couple of different ways, depending on how I would want to cast this character's uh-huh. race. Uh-huh. Because potentially there's like a, like a, there could be like Jason Momoa vibes. Okay. Okay. Or, like, I could see potentially, uh... Ooh, hell yeah. Dance, dance we, they, we live in a very busy street, uh, and it's summer, and everyone's partying outside, so... Uh, I don't think it's a party. I think it might be a political march. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's oh, that's kind of what it sounded like. Yeah. Oh. They got good music, I mean, you though. can still dance to I it. I hope then. I was grooving to the right thing. Did, uh, yo, yo. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Should we talk about that right now? No, we'll wait. Okay. We'll wait. <laughs> I don't uh, know which one it is. Uh, uh, it's a good one. Someone shot at Trump at one of his rallies. Uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. they what? didn't get the job done. Uh, okay. It was a ruse by his team <laughs> to earn Who would play? Uh, t- uh, potentially Jason Momo. Potentially, uh, d- before he was problematic, Johnny Depp. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that maybe, kind of vibe. Maybe a Native American actor. I don't, I'm not too sure. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Michael, have you come to some sort of conclusion? Yeah, some sort okay. of conclusion. Beautiful. We'll uh, come to that in a second. <laughs> <Luke>. <laughs> uh, I am playing a turtle. He has this sort of pale blue, gray, blacky skin um, on his shell, which is like this, you know, when it's almost black, but it's blue kind of shell. Uh, and on that shell, there is this, it, there's this giant cre- like crevice and crater, which has been hit. And it's uh, snaked out across his whole shell. In the cracks, it's got like the gold fill, like they do with the the Japanese pottery. I can't remember the name of it. Jake, do you remember what that is? Uh, Danielle might know better than me. Danielle, do you know what the name of that is? Oh, oh I used to know what we'll it was. We'll come back to uh, that. Uh, uh, Michael, Michael, look Lime it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're asking me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Japanese pottery? That's what I Google. Uh, hang on. I'll hold. Uh, I'll broken hold. Japanese oh, pottery. I'll it. hold you up to the camera. Hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah, that's my little mini. That's me. I got a giant war hammer uh, made with this blue sort of tungsten metal-like vibes filled with gold inlays. Kintsugi. Kintsugi. Kintsugi, that's it. Uh, This is Edorath. Hasn't been painted yet. My sword's broken. And uh, we'll get to Agnar in a moment. I don't have Azeroth. I'm Azeroth. I wasn't going to use... I didn't think we were using him tonight. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) He's also not painted. Also, my stage ready. My turtle's also five feet tall and almost five feet wide. Mm-hmm. So he's a, he's a solid square. He's a real, real, so real chode. He is a chode. Uh, and he's got no hair, but a beak. And I would say he's played by or vo- voiced by Michael Shannon. I love that. Oh, I like Michael Shannon. Yeah. Came prepared, Michael. What'd you do? Uh, have you... You <laughs> do have some more questions. <laughs> you know this quick. What? All right. No, I tried. Uh, <laughs> not Danielle. Danielle. Googling, Danielle. <laughs> not me Googling Can brown you... shaggy hair actors. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because Michael Shannon's a blue turtle. <laughs> no, for me... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind just watching it. No, no, no. No spoilers. No, no, no. no spoilers. <laughs> Danielle. All right, uh, all right, all right. Yes. I play one Agnar Ulu. Ul- Fuck me. Let me try that again. Agnar Hang on, we'll cut. We'll cut and go again. 
<laughs> no, you're not. We're not gonna count. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. Um, anyway, Agnar. Agnar is a, a cleric, uh, a life cleric. Um, she is an Arakokra uh, who uh, resembles very much a chicken um, with hands. With hands. <laughs> The eternal debate. <laughs> <laughs> Which for some reason is weird. What's, that, other what's, that, what's, what's that on her hip? Uh, oh yeah, so she's she's dressed in fairly simple robes as as clerics I want to do. Um, but she does carry a nice hefty uh, cast iron frying pan on her side that she rarely uses as a weapon but it does, you know, mm. come in handy on occasion. Um, Who... Uh, yeah, who who would, who, who would voice her besides voice a, a female uh, uh, Michael Sheen? <laughs> yes, I really like Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen, that female yeah. would be so yeah. perfect. Yeah, um, I get, I get. I'll tell you. T- uh, tell me who you think. It's, it's there's also, I mean, there's a some sort of mix between, I think Maggie Smith and Judy Dench kind of yeah collaborating together with uh-huh. Michael Sheen if. If they were a thruple and had a baby, and that baby was then old-ish, that Danielle's would got weird kings. Um, and and the Oldish Scottish baby. woman from uh, uh, your favourite uh, medical show. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, Grey's Anatomy. A little bit of that voice. Um, yeah, the Scottish woman from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, 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 little, yeah. Little, a little bit of vibes there. Yeah. Uh, Michael, who that? did you uh, who did you come up with? Uh, like Jake Gyllenhaal. All right, moving on. Like, more scrawny, like <laughs> a little Tennant. less muscle muscles on him. Did you say muscles? Muscles, muscles. muscles. muscular, muscular. Um, muscles. Or like, or like a Orlando Bloom kind of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had oh, it no. in color, but we're not sponsored by. It. Can you see that even? Uh, uh, <laughs> Pass it down. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can see it over here. Yeah, very. <laughs> there he is. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Not sponsored mm-hmm. by here for. Wait, who's this message from? But we would no message. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Those are our characters. Uh, now we are going to run through a recap. Uh, I am going to mm. rattle off some events, and I'll let you guys chime in as you wish. I'm going to have to defend a lot of my choices here. You guys started on the island of Bokt, <laughs> an island known, according to Caleb, for its many precious resources. Oh, uh, right. In Jakael, the world of Jakael. What's your name from again? Uh, sorry. What's Steelwood? it known for again? Steelwood. Uh, <laughs> in Jekyll, the, uh, the, the world that they're in, uh, there are many continents. There's Severe, the human continent. Neodract, which is in the middle of a civil war between elves and dwarves. There's Fiona, the uh, animalistic continent down south. Uh, and then to the uh, west, the Isle of Bokt, where all the nomads, all the strange, uh, arc- arcanically inclined individuals <laughs> live. Um, you guys went there uh, for various reasons. You met there. Uh, you headed into the mists, these strange mists that protect the island from invaders. Uh, you ran into an elf named Nim, mm. named Nim, uh, who was promptly sent into the mists on his own by Bias, Force, formerly known as Bias. Didn't we miss the whole thing about a sign there? Uh, <laughs> I can't go over everything. Otherwise, we're going to be here forever. Uh, go back and listen if you want to get the in jokes. So we can't uh, do every you single. You made your way <laughs> to Bale, the city in the center. You met uh, the Baleman, one of the Baleman, a young mm-hmm. upstart, uh, Bakanov, mm-hmm. a Goliath who you became fast friends with. The Baleman who are able to traverse the ever-changing roads of Bokt. You headed up to Lahias to help him become a fully fledged uh, Baleman. And while you were there, you met Vasily. Uh, Now's probably a good time to mention a cast member that's no longer here. Sephiroth, a tiefling friend of yours, played by Dalen Lesser Serafini. Uh, you can still hear Dalen on the uh, on the airwaves, Sephiroth Safik Safari. Uh, as you headed up there, she wanted to get her tattoos down pat, uh, uh, hooking up with Vasily, the uh, tattooist, the... Um, uh, how would you say that? The shaman of the group there. Uh, and as a result, you discovered under Lahias a poor human strapped into vines, almost like Neo in the Matrix. What do we call him? Human? Yeah. yeah. Human? What do we? What humanoid. We? Humanoid. Humanoid. In. Before my time. So. <laughs> he, was a, he was humanoid-esque. Was uh, and you freed him. As you freed him, mm-hmm. it uh, was uh, made known that he protected Bokt uh, and that uh, it, with its defenses stripped, time was now of the essence. Uh, you headed back down towards Bale. You rescued some children. Before then, you met Azareth in, a, uh, in an alleyway there, helping you fight off some assassins sent to try and attack force. Uh, you went down. You saved some children. You came back up. As you came back 
back up, the Bailman were being slaughtered I by. Know, I wasn't there. I came back at this part. Yeah. Were being you were drunk. Yeah. 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 You were Character. drunk in an alley. Yeah, I was somewhere. drunk in an alley. Then you guys <laughs> fucked off and left me alone. So. You came back. The Bailman were being slaughtered. Uh, you watched as Nim killed uh, our favorite uh, Shakespeare uh, toting uh, mayor. Uh, as he was killed, you killed Nim. You managed to uh, save. A couple of bailmen, but it was made apparent that this island was about to be under attack and you guys were their last hope. You headed off to Arva, the beautiful river city where the fish make you trip bowls, and indeed you trip bowls. And you left Bucky and Pierup, the person you uh, saved from the uh, uh, the confinements of his, uh, his kind of uh, protective prison. Uh, and Pip, your little... Your little friend. Uh, you managed to uh, leave them with a guy called Ari, a strange, curious individual who told you to keep your eyes open. It was at this point that you were realizing that every point of exhaustion you got past one seemed to give you powers, but you weren't able to stave off the uh, effects of the um, the exhaustion. Uh, you hopped on a ship with Captain Orius and Fibrous McGee, uh, and you sailed around. As you sailed around... Because uh, uh, we were trying to get help. To Trying to get help right, to save right. the there island. There was a purpose. Got to save for, Buck. For, for yeah. the journey point. Got to turn the tides yeah. of the war. Severian yeah. ships bared down on you, and uh, Edorath called to his patron, and an enormous dragon turtle and a whirlpool helped you out. Yeah. Uh, Michael's favorite part. Yeah, if you uh, go back and listen to any episodes, <laughs> listen to those episodes. Uh, yeah. You bamfed around a bit with a magical <laughs> storm, <laughs> and you ended up near the Shadowlands. Uh, as you adventured through the Shadowlands, you took flight up a... Uh, a it was a 1,200-foot... I, I did the uh, did the math. A twelve hundred foot kind of steep, uh, almost mountain, almost a cylinder of stone, twelve hundred feet, which is the same height as Mount Fuji. So if you imagine that height, that is the height that you and Sephiroth flew up to. And as you came over the top, you saw a giant that tall swiping at you, golden eyes, beautiful hair. Uh, you saw a city in the center of Tortui. Um, and as you kind of went back down, you guys, <laughs> went, uh, you went to Hachtui. Uh, you made your way down, hopped back on the ship, and it was at this point the Sephiroth uh, was attacked and taken away from you, mm. back to Severe. Uh, again, listen to those episodes if you want an update of what's going on with Severe, including you guys, because I revealed something to Michael, and he was like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you sailed on, you made your way to Fiona, the Animal Isle, in order to try and seek help from uh, Gale Village, uh, where Edorath is from, and you found out that Edorath had not completed his choosing where youngins from the Howling Ring, uh, from uh, Fiona. Fiona, make their way into the Howling Ring and let their savage tendencies either take over or repress them. And after a year, they are given a stamp of approval. You went through the forests. You found a sentient weapon. Uh, Oshbosh Bagosh, what was his name? <laughs> uh, Tim Tam Tom? Uh, no, uh, the, uh, Serana was the first blade. Uh, yeah, Serana is my sword. Tim Tam Tom was the boomerang. Tim Tam- yeah. 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 So for some reason, Serana doesn't follow the same no, rhyme scheme. No, Bing Bang <laughs> Bosch was the boomerang. Was the boomerang. Yeah. Tom, Tim Tan Tom was the trident that got right. thrown away. Yeah. You yeah. met a bunch of sentient... I the trident. Now. Oh, what did you throw away? The, the boomerang. The boomerang. boomerang. <laughs> it sounded dodgy <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, you went to Gale Village. As you went to Gale Village, yeah. you were confronted with <laughs> were creatures. Get help, get uh, the were creatures that live there are, tr- are having trouble kind of getting representation in Lorna Karth. Uh, you agreed to uh, kill this giant phoenix that seemed to be attacking the eternal eel in the lake. You did so. Uh... As you killed it, it came back to life and flew back to the uh, the volcano at the south there. Uh, you ended up going back to Gale Village, uh, and after pulling many cards from the deck of many things over this period, many many cards. One of the cards, too, too many cards. One of the cards bringing you your ally, Sir yes. Alpen. Uh, the rest of the cards bringing you Edorath, the marks of a devil and a demon, both of them vying for something. Uh, these devils confronted you after you confronted your village, and. Uh, wreaked havoc uh, you managed to get out of there unscathed the village pretty badly damaged but no one really slaughtered and you made your way back in towards the howling ring in order to uh, make your way in to the temple of Brigantia to save uh, Nesh uh, and get allies Agnar's friend and get allies <laughs> more oh, allies we're still trying to do that right? as you right, made right? It's, it's, it's a work have any allies yet <laughs> uh, we have <laughs> kind of we have yeah. Celia we have uh, you uh, ran into a, a hot uh, dwarf who uh who kind of got the information that... that uh, yeah, we overshared is... with a hot dwarf. Yeah, overshared that, with a hot dwarf. That, that was my bad. <laughs> it happens. Uh, you then made your way into the Howling Ring, confronted some weird uh, warped creatures. You got to the Temple of Brigantia and you managed to free everyone in the Temple of Brigantia from Yay. these uh, yuan tea that seemed to be trying to make their way into Lorna Karth. And as you made your way through the tunnels, secret tunnels that lead from the Howling Ring from the Temple of Brigantia into Lorna Karth, Edorath's devil showed up and Whoa. slaughtered not only... Uh, Sir Alpin, 
Yes. But all the clerics and Nesh barely survived with a uh, a revival there. Not my fault. Well, she uh, died. Yes, she was definitely not my fault. We left off with you guys <laughs> rather downtrodden, making your way through the tunnel into Lorna Cath. Did I miss anything? Yeah, you missed a whole bunch. Go on, then. Well, <laughs> you know, there's like this, all this... <laughs> Add jellyfish cancer for a bit there. <laughs> jellyfish cancer, yeah. yeah. Again, we don't oh, want to yeah. give anything away. If you haven't yeah. watched it, watch yeah. it. Yeah. Listen to it. There's we so had, many fun details in it. We, we had yeah, a cool guest star. We had a bunch of guest mm-hmm. stars. Yeah, we had uh, June Laporte. Yeah. Uh, we had some one shots mm-hmm. with um, uh, a whole bunch of people. We had Lucas uh, Pearson. We had uh, Lyndon Porco. Uh, Lyndon Porco. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Jackson Berlin. Yes. Uh, I don't remember who else we had, uh, but we had plenty. There's Apologies. a whole one shot about a character you didn't mention. Who? Uh, Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah. Oh, Cotton Eye Joe! <laughs> if you want the, if you want my Cotton proudest Joe. moment in, 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 in improv, <laughs> listen to I don't know what episode it is, but while you're while they're on the ship, some of the best improv Caleb and I have ever done. <laughs> that was booty hole as well. That was yes. the booty hole. That was yeah. that whole episode. Uh, but here we are. Uh, how have your characters changed over this uh, period? Uh, we, like you mm. said, when we left mm. off, your wild magic was surging, and you lost your hair. You turned blue. I've shrunk. I you you shrunk. Blue. I've aged. You've aged a few times, and I de-aged. So I'm kind of sitting at the same age. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm probably. I'm just the same height as Force. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's looking pretty pathetic right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, yeah. Physically, yeah. he Azareth is is blue skin, bald headed, short. Blue man group. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. We're, blue we're creating blue man group. <laughs> it's the <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> Different shades of blue. Yeah. What's the blue man group's arch nemesis? Uh, Out of tune drums? Yeah, probably. Pipes that are clogged? I don't know. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen the blue man group live? No, but no. I would. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that I'm like, I don't know why, but I would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as for my character, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't have to drive this whole fucking. Let's talk thing. about blue man Same groups. Uh, my, Speaking of blue man groups, my character physically has not changed. Mm. Physically looks pretty similar. Um, maybe he lost a, a few pounds uh, inside a shell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, if a turtle I loses just, weight, that's just now imagining train. that like yeah. the when shell's was, just slightly <laughs> was fit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, originally, like bias force was like just like pudgy inside, and now he's just like the yeah. little, like he's been, scrawny. Yeah, he's been, yeah. It's been like the, the people who go backpacking for a year after like <laughs> they finish Come school back, and they like, get a lot gaunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> don't ask him to take the shell off. Um, <laughs> He has changed his name. It was Bias, and now it's uh, Force, uh, with the sort of changing of his attitude about how the whole world should exist in a balance that he now believes to a, to enact, to achieve, to obtain, to cause any change, you have to force it. You have to create the change and drive the change with... At the end of the day, power. The, those who have more power, magically, physically, more are power. the ones that can uh, enact whatever they want. And so he doesn't believe that gods are omnipotent, omniscient, and all that. He fully believes that they are um, just stronger beings, mm. ones with more power. And he is indeed, he has not been shy about this. This is not a spoiler. No, he's trying this is to episode kill, one. Overthrow yeah. Oren, the god of life and death. His deity that he was uh brought up worshiping and through chats with other um, followers of other religious idols he almost now believes that uh all gods are one all the gods in the pantheon are potentially one being um and so he's not opposed to killing all the gods exclusive take right now. Yeah. Um, there take. is there is uh, after talking to another character you didn't mention won't spoil anything here he also thinks that uh, there has been a... Con- I don't know if this is true or not in the world, but there has been a shift in many different pantheons through over time, um, mm-hmm. and that maybe it's just the time for a new one, because the world ain't working properly due to what has happened in his life. Um, mm. And what he started off as being sort of... had the attitude that to create balance, you had to like do like for like whatever he got done to him he had to do back to somebody else hence what happened to nim mm-hmm. um and now it's now he's trying to play a longer smarter game as to what retribution means to him okay okay 
I see it. I respect it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, main thing that changed, though, was his accent from episode one, two, to three, to four. <laughs> <laughs> so did Sephiris, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, Sephiris started, <laughs> started off with, started a, with a Scottish pretty, accent. Pretty strong accent. <laughs> and then she gave up on it, and you picked it up. Uh, fun, fun, fun. Uh, so that's Force's journey so far. Nice, 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 yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Edereth, Agnar? Uh, yeah, I mean, Agnar, Agnar started off very, very innocent. First time leaving the, the shelter of of temple life really even in the howling ring agnar was in the temple with the other worshippers of brigantia mm-hmm. um yeah first time out in the big world so agnar's agnar i think is is grown grown a lot um she's become less naive i think about things and in regards to some things probably more more confident as well um, she also had a bit of a mishap with some cards mm-hmm. and <laughs> intelligence some took of a dive. her intelligence took a dive, which has been, um, kind of br- brought about or reflected in, in, in ability to, you know, select the right words or recall things accurately. She's still incredibly wise. <laughs> so she's like, I, I know the thing, but I can't express it mm-hmm. right now. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, spoilers. But there's been, or not spoilers. There's been a very, very big, and we talked about it, a devastating event um, most recently, which will certainly have we'll see an, an impact on okay. Agnar's everything. I think her faith, her, I'm her, every, for you. her everything. Really. <laughs> Luke, Luke, are you, do you know where you are right now? Are you okay. <laughs> <laughs> Luke sometimes has yeah. Forrest, yeah. Forrest is coming for you He's going to make you one of us <laughs> uh, Yeah, as, as someone who has had Very, very unwavering faith in her deity For her deity to not Respond In a great hour of need I think is Maybe it was a test of faith Maybe, maybe she's not really there Maybe yeah. how, how, how many But there's questions like maybe For the first time, I think There's questions Excellent Yeah Edorath. Uh, Edorath started out friendless, drunk, uh, d- incredibly dirty. Mm-hmm. Mostly still much. there. <laughs> Physically, not so you much. Had to have a bath. Yeah, <laughs> had had a single bath. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Has lost Pirate. more blood than should physically be possible. Yeah. Uh, is now a werewolf? Yeah. Question mark. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Uh, but yes, he is now on sort of at least emotionally, now on a, a, a path of redemption and sort of realizing that he cannot continuously outrun the consequences of his actions. Mm. Uh, so he is trying now to be a better person, whether or not to be through faith or through action or through finally owning up to the mistakes he's made. Mm-hmm. I Indeed. definitely haven't destroyed three villages worth of people. It's fine. Repercussions will come around. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, you it's now fine. have a, you no longer have a devil coming after you. It's just a yeah. Demon we, we, yeah. Now it's just a demon lord that owns my you. soul. It's yeah. you know it's just an average Tuesday. Well, no. And that's the story so far. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah. Anything else I missed? We're on every Tuesday. How have you changed as a DM? Yeah, how have you changed as a Jake? DM? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've aged about forty fucking years. Uh, just watch me try to set up anything technical, and you'll see the old electrician in me getting angry uh, at, inanim- at an- inanimate objects, just breaking things. Uh, yeah, yeah, smashing things. Uh, how have I changed as a DM? I don't know. I honestly don't know. You guys would know better than me. I've certainly uh, felt less. Precious? Yeah. Less beholden to, like, the story we have. Purely because we had... Caleb and I had a story planned mm-hmm. out. And, <laughs> and we were like, then, nope. then we both kind of law-wise went in different directions. And we've come back around together again. But in that period, I was like, oh, I guess if that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. And same with him. He's like, I will throw this in. I was like, yeah, all right. The, like the volcano. He was like, I want to put a volcano in the world. And I'm like, look at the map. There's one on the map. And he's like, ah, another one. I was like, all right, there's another one. So, yeah. Uh, I think it's, yeah, become less precious and just appreciated just letting you guys do silly shit, you know. Um, especially playing in Luke's games as well. Um, like having that slightly sillier, slightly more irreverent, like, eh, you know what? Let's do that. 
And I'm like, oh, yeah, happens. cool. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think mm. that's how I've changed. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Is a, how did you, what, what did you, without giving anything away, mm. is there any story hook that we just completely missed <laughs> that you Probably. just throw it out the window now? You're like, well, that's not happening. Uh, you're about to do a one shot that hopefully brings a couple of those <laughs> back, back, back to life. Uh, He'll never let anything go. We'll He's see. like, I'm Not if we have these. anything to say about um, it. <laughs> not really, no. Um, I mean, you've played in Casbold Ocean, which mm. is the first world I created, and it it was literally me putting too much in, and then three different groups of four different groups have played it, and they've populated the world again. So I've done that with this world, so that there are always going to be plot hooks you're not going to catch on to, and that's fine because they'll be in there for the next people that play in this world. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, this is a very long session zero, but. Uh, Everything you need to know, uh, and all you need to know is that we are going to be back here uh, every Tuesday or Sunday, if you're a patron. Um, extra content on the Patreon. You get uh, uh, solo episodes that Michael and I have been yeah. uh, working on in hell. Uh, you get talkbacks with uh, Herc and I. You get mm-hmm. a, a lot of a lot of fun little things. Um, yeah. Recipes. Recipes, yeah. Recipes. What, what, what Danielle kind yeah, of makes for- you eat what we eat. You get to eat what we eat, yeah. yeah. Not just Twizzlers and uh, fruit. You have to make it, though. You have to make it. You have to make it. You yeah. do. We don't Though if you t- if you there is a the top the top Patreon thing is that I'll DM a one shot for you like twice a year. But if you want to trade that in for me coming to cook one of Daniel's <laughs> recipes, I'll do that. And you have to do it based on how the recipe is written. And trust me, if you do get on the Patreon and see how I've written those recipes, they've got a lot of attitude in them. God help you. <laughs> yeah. They're very improvisational. <laughs> Speaking of improv, let's do an improv game. Oh. Okay. oh. Yay. oh. If you want to watch us do improv games, every episode we start with an improv game. Oh, um, we can do visual games now. We can, yes. absolutely. <laughs> oh, that. Stay ever. Oh, we're going to be no more getting called now. out for this is an audio podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 we can't do that. It will still be an audio podcast for those of you that uh, prefer it. But uh, you can watch it in both. Watch it, hear it. At the same it. time, yeah. have, have the YouTube video up Theater on the tab. Mind Flyer. Watch it here. Have, have it up somewhere so we get twice as many views. Yeah. Watch the video on mute and just yeah. listen to the yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or listen to the podcast Try on mute like it Luke up. does to get our numbers up. <laughs> there we go. I don't know what's happening. I hope, you're, I hope your shit's good online. Yeah. <laughs> I so. I love it. I, I think one-on-one D&D was a, a discovery that, that we were like, oh, fuck, this is actually... Pretty. It's getting more complicated though. He's throwing me new multiple characters. Yeah, Dale's play. playing multiple Ooh. characters as well. So Damn. yeah, the Hansy Bandits back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I gotta I catch up. That. I gotta catch up. I, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Hansy Bandit. Uh, Anyway, if you want to hear a Hansy Bandit and all that shit, uh, join one in shot to that was our, never finished. Jump into our, <laughs> our one shots. Yeah, uh, we've finished uh, one. one one shot. My no, one. Two. Hey. two, two, two. Hey. Hey. We had a first one shot. So <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for joining in. We'll see you uh, in the next one. Theater of the Mind Flip.